Were you going to make some chicken broccoli alfredo, but you forgot to pick up a jar at the store? Or maybe you just want to know exactly what goes into your sauce. Well, I have the perfect solution for you here. This is my light chicken broccoli alfredo made with ingredients that you probably already have at home. So if you're looking for a quick, easy, and delicious pasta dish, and you'd like to know how this is made, stick around, because it's coming up next. Hello and welcome to my kitchen. My name is Roy. I'm a home cook and amateur baker and I am here on this channel sharing recipes that have helped me to lose over 125 pounds, whether those recipes are mine or someone else's. Now today is one of mine. This is my take on chicken broccoli alfredo. Now typically what I do is get a jar of the Classico Alfredo which is about two bites. I'm on the better balance plan of healthy, which is equivalent to the old WW blue plan, which I guess is now their current simplified plan. But it's two bites for a quarter cup, which is great. And I don't mind that when I'm in the mood for something quick. But if I haven't had any on hand, I know for a time there was a shortage on finding any of it. Um, I came up with a way of making it just with the things I would typically have around the house and the bites and points for the sauce will be the same. Just two bites or points per serving. And I think you probably get a little bit more than a quarter cup. But it's a delicious, quick and easy pasta dish. And I will even tell you how to change up the sauce a little bit to make other things. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go over the ingredients. I have here 24 ounces of chicken breast. Now I have diced this up into small bits and I will show you here how I did that. I just cut along the length of it through the middle, then cut that into four strips and then cut that across to make the little chunks that I have here. In chicken broccoli alfredo, I don't personally want bigger chunks of chicken. But if that's what you prefer, you can make them a little bigger. I like them that's about an inch or so cubed. Now this is about six ounces of chicken breast per serving. I know a lot of recipes or suggestions is that four ounces is a serving, but I like it a little heartier and it's zero bite, zero points for me. So I'm not too concerned, but if you are on one of those plans where maybe it does matter, you can reduce this to a pound of chicken. That's fine. This is a pound and a half, 24 ounces. I have here one and a half cups of almond milk. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up heating this up when we add it to our sauce, just quickly in the microwave. But if you wanted, you could heat it in a pan on the stovetop just to get it warm. You don't have to get it boiling or anything. I have here one and a half cups of broccoli florets. Now I've cut them up and I will show you that here into small bits. Again, just like with the chicken, I don't like big chunks of broccoli in my chicken broccoli alfredo. I like to just get little bits spread throughout. And that's about one and a half cups, which is about five ounces before I remove the stalks and everything. But if you wanna do a little more, you can do a little more. It is zero by zero points for me, so you can go crazy. But I think that's a good amount of broccoli for this. I have here one half cup of Parmesan cheese. Now, freshly grated is the best. I ended up getting a pouch of freshly grated Parmesan at the supermarket. So that way it was easier for me. Now, when I looked up Parmesan in the app, the healthy app, it was coming up as seven bites for this amount. When I scanned the actual item, it only came up to five bites for that amount. So I am going with the five bites. Just make sure you input anything that you are using as you use it. Scan the actual item. Don't always rely on what it says in the app. I have here two tablespoons of flour. That is going to help thicken our sauce and two tablespoons is plenty to get that done. 
I have here one tablespoon of light butter. I use, I can't believe it's not butter light. That is my favorite. And that is what I'm using there. You just need one tablespoon. I have here two teaspoons of minced garlic. That's about two cloves if you want to mince it yourself. And you can adjust that up or down depending on your liking of garlic. You can eliminate it completely if you really want. But I like that little hint of garlic in there. Last but not least, I have some salt and some pepper. I didn't measure that. This is going to be to taste and it's mostly going to be to season our chicken. We're trying to watch our salt a little bit here. So I'm trying not to add too much. So it's all to taste. If you want a little bit more, you can do a little bit more. And I nearly forgot my spaghetti over here. I have eight ounces of spaghetti. I'm just using the Prince spaghetti, just regular spaghetti. I know I used to all the time talk about fiber gourmet, which I do love. The bites and points are lower, but it is a little cost prohibitive for me being on a fixed income. So I've started going with just regular pasta it's only about two bites more per serving. And as long as I adjust other things throughout the day, it's gonna be fine. And I also have some cooking spray here just to coat our pan. But those are all the ingredients that we're going to need. So let me shuffle a few things around and we will get started with our Alfredo sauce. All right, so first things first, I'm going to take my milk and I'm going to just heat that in the microwave for about a minute just to get it warmed up. And while that is going, I'm going to add my butter to a pan that is over medium heat. This is just a saucepan that I'm adding the butter to and we are just going to get that to melt. And I have here my whisk. This whisk is especially good for sauces because it helps you to get into the corners, which a big round whisk is a little difficult to get into the corners. So this is a sauce whisk. And so that is what I'm using to stir this together. So let that melt. Let me grab that milk. Okay, so the milk is warmed. It doesn't have to be too, too hot, as I said. And one of the things I did wonder, there is a debate about bechamel, which is basically what we are making. This kind of sauce is the start is called a bechamel. And there is a debate as to whether you add cold milk or cream or hot milk or cream. And some people said cold, but the majority did say warm or hot because it helps to incorporate more easily into the mixture and helps everything to hom homogenize. The cold will kind of seize up a little bit. So I'm going with the warm milk, but honestly, even if it was room temperature, it'd probably be okay. But our butter is melted. So now I'm going to add in my garlic and just Heat that through for about 30 seconds just to get that flavor enhanced in there and to mellow out the sharpness of the garlic. Okay, now what I'm going to do is sprinkle in my flour and I'm going to keep stirring as I do because I want to try to get it kind of coated with some of that butter and it's going to clump up. It's not going to look like a paste as many bechamel starters would because typically there is an even amount of fat and flour and we're a little off ratio because I'm trying to keep the bites and points down. Just mix that through and you'll see there are a lot of little clumps. Part of that is the garlic, but part of it is the flour. If you see any big clumps, kind of mash those a little bit as you go. So you just want to cook this down for about a minute just to get rid of that raw flour taste. So it's been about a minute. You can see it's a dry, crumbly thing. This part of the mixture is called a roux. Not with the garlic. The garlic is usually not part of this. But when you put together butter or any fat with the flour, that is called a roux. And this is our roux, even though it doesn't really look as creamy as most roux do. And no, Kim, I am not talking about RuPaul although I could. Anyway, so now we're going to add in our milk, our warmed milk. You want to add it in gradually. So while I'm whisking, I'm going to add in a little bit and adding it in a little bit at a time helps for that flour to not clump up even more because if you added 
all of the milk in at one time. My glasses are a little steamed. I don't know if you can tell. It would be a little more difficult to incorporate. So we're just going to gradually add that in. I've got about probably half in. I'm going to get into those corners where any flour might be hiding and whisk that well. You can see that there are still clumps but they will work themselves out as we go along. And again, part of that is the garlic that's in there, but you can see these bigger clumps are not the garlic. All right, so it's starting to thicken up a little bit. So I'm gonna add in some more of the milk. And if you see any big clumps, you can press on those, try to break them up a little bit. But as the flour starts to hydrate, it's going to loosen up some of those clumps. Now, as I said, this is called a bechamel, and this is one of the five mother sauces, they call it, because a lot of other sauces are made from these mother sauces. Now, this is also the start to macaroni and cheese. If you wanted, you could put in some um, cheddar cheese, fat-free cheddar cheese, and make a cheese sauce for broccoli, for pasta, what have you. You can even add mozzarella or other types of cheese as well. But now we have to let this thicken up. So we're going to keep whisking and letting that flour hydrate. And then as flour hydrates and gets out into the rest of the milk, it's gonna to start to thicken up. And then we will move on. <laughs> Okay, you can see here, it's been about six minutes, and you can see here that the milk has thickened up. You don't want it really thick because it will start to thicken a bit as it cools down, and we're also going to be adding our cheese to it, which will also help to thicken it. Okay, so we're gonna take our cheese and whisking. We're going to sprinkle in our cheese and get that going. And you just wanna whisk this until it's smooth and looks like it's pretty well incorporated right there so now i would turn this down to the lowest setting just to keep it warm for now but because i need to use this burner i'm going to shift it over here and set it on the warm setting just to keep it warm while we're preparing the rest but you do want to cover it so you don't lose too much moisture while it is sitting there warming so let me shuffle a few things around and we'll move on to our broccoli and chicken Okay, I've been heating my skillet over a medium high heat and it is feeling pretty hot from about an inch above. So what I'm going to do is start with the broccoli. I'm just going to take the florets and dump them in and that's a great sign when you hear that sizzle. So now what I'm going to do is let this sit here for about a minute or two. Usually I'll do about a minute. I want to get some color on this broccoli, some caramelization. What I've told you before is called the Maillard reaction where the sugars, the natural sugars in food turn brown and create like a caramelized depth of flavor that is really going to enhance this dish. So I'm gonna let this sit for just one minute and then I'll check one or two, see if it's browning. And then generally I'll toss it a little bit just to try to get a little bit of color elsewhere on the broccoli, not just on that one side. All right, so it's been about a minute and you can see there is some definite caramelization happening here on the broccoli. And that is what I'm looking for, just to enhance the flavor. So I'm gonna to toss it a little bit just to let another part of the broccoli sit on the skillet for a bit. Now I'm gonna let this sit for about another minute. Okay, so it's been another minute. Now you wanna make sure you have a lid for whatever skillet you are doing this in because what we're gonna do now is take about a quarter cup of water, just throw that in and cover it. So now what this is going to do is steam for two minutes and you get a delicious, crisp, tender broccoli that is so good and it's got that caramelization from the browning. This is the way I always prepare my carrots. 
cauliflower and broccoli. Cauliflower and carrots, you would have to do longer. They're not as tender as broccoli, but I love this preparation for broccoli. So let me let this steam for two minutes and I'll be back. Okay, so it's been about two minutes once that steam goes away. You can see nicely soft, still has a little bit of its crispness. It's also going to soften a little bit more as it sits in this bowl. So we're going to take this off the heat and add it to this bowl to get it out of our way so we can work on our chicken. So now for the chicken, as I said, I'm going to salt and pepper them. You can do this to taste. I'm not going to do a lot of salt, maybe a quarter teaspoon, a bit of pepper, because you want to be able to season your meat before you get it into the pan so that it can really flavor the chicken. So now I'm just going to toss this around a little bit to coat all of the chicken with the seasoning and that's pretty good it doesn't have to be too precise now i'm going to spray my pan once again it's still over medium high heat and i'm going to add the chicken in and spread that out and now i'm going to kind of do the same thing i did with the broccoli I'm gonna let that sit here for a minute just to get some browning on that side that is touching the pan. And while we are cooking the chicken, I'm gonna start my pasta water. Get that boiling right over here and I'm going to add some salt to that just so that we can season our pasta. As I said, I'm trying to keep the salt low. Usually I would add about a tablespoon or two and get that started to boil. Now it's been about a minute for the chicken. I'm gonna just try to flip big chunks of it. You can see the color on there. Just what we wanted, because that color is flavor. And you will have to start to break up the chicken because it will start to kind of cook together. And if you do see any chunks that are bigger than you like, you can just break them apart with your spatula. We're gonna just let that sit for a minute. I really should have started this pasta water sooner. You know, my mind is like a sieve. Speaking of which, I do need to get my sieve to drain my pasta, so I will be back. And my water is boiling, I'm going to throw in my pasta and I'm letting the chicken cook. You can see a lot of juices have come out of the chicken. We are going to try to get rid of a lot of those so it doesn't water down our Alfredo sauce. I have my pasta and I'm just using spaghetti. You can use any pasta you want, really. All right, so that's going. I've got my timer going for that. The chicken is just about ready. The chicken's gonna take about five minutes or so, and I check it by cutting through one of the bigger pieces to make sure that it is cooked inside, and it is. So now what we're going to do is add our broccoli back in and toss that through. So there's our chicken broccoli part of the equation. So now I'm gonna turn this down to low so that I can add in our alfredo sauce and get that tossed in there and all coated. Spread that throughout the chicken and the broccoli and I'm going to add in the little bit of pepper that I had left. We do like pepper around here so I'm going to just add that in and stir that through. Okay so since our pasta is not yet ready I'm going to cover this just so we don't lose too much of that moisture in there from the sauce. So my pasta still has about nine minutes. So I will see you in nine minutes. Okay, my pasta is done. So I'm gonna turn off all of the burners and I'm going to add my pasta to the chicken broccoli Alfredo over here. And you could, if you wanted, portion out the pasta and put the sauce over it. I just like incorporating it all together. And I do have here about a half a cup of the pasta water, just in case your pasta sauces ever get too thick. It's always a good idea to reserve some of that pasta water so that way you can thin out a sauce if you need to. And it'll actually help to thicken it as well because of the starches from the pasta. Okay, so everything is nicely coated. I do not need the pasta water, but that's all there is to it, to making your own chicken broccoli alfredo at home. If you don't want to use one of the jars, which to be honest, who knows what's in that.
This, you know exactly what you've put into it, but also the almond milk in here really enhances that nuttiness, really enhances the flavor of the Parmesan, in my opinion. But that's all there is to it. I'm gonna cover it for now so it doesn't dry out while I give you all of those nutrition facts. Now, as I said, the sauce would be two bites or points per serving. This will serve four people. And the sauce alone would be two bites or blue points. With the pasta, whatever pasta you have is gonna change the rest of the equation. But for what I made here, this is going to be seven bites or old blue points, which is not too bad for a dinner and it's gonna be very satisfying. Now, if you are following calories, the calories for this would be 489. And if you are following macros, the fat would be 10.1 grams. The carbs would be 48.8 grams. The fiber would be 7.5 grams. And the protein would be 54.5 grams for a serving of four as I made it. As I said, use whatever pasta you like. I am just sticking with regular pasta, five body soap points a serving. And for those of you, I've seen some people ask if you weigh your pasta dry or cooked. I always weigh mine dry because that's how it is listed on the package. So it's just far easier for me to get the bites and points correct if I'm measuring dry. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd appreciate the usual like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit the notification bell for the next time I upload any sort of video. And the recipe for this, of course, will be linked directly down below, as well as the link to my blog itself if you wanna find any of my other recipes. Also down there, you'll find my Amazon storefront if I've used anything like my whisk that you were curious about, it may be there my Built Bar Rewards, Fetch Rewards, Skinny Syrups Code, and my social media if you'd like to follow me over there. I have my Instagram and two Facebook groups that I am part of. So go check out the description box for all sorts of information. But I think that we are going to be enjoying a delicious dinner any moment now. So until next time, bye.